Jason, in terms of being polarizing or, or beyond that, what else did you learn from that experience that maybe wouldn't work today? I realize you can't orchestrate something to go viral and yeah. It, it, yeah, it's, it's a matter of timing. Right. So, yeah, what would work today that, um, that, that worked back then and what wouldn't work? Um, I, think, I think all of the, the factors that, that made that movie successful would work today because we were on the cusp of when you could market on the internet and actually sell movies on the internet. So the technology was there. It was still a little bit primitive, um, but it was there. The thing I would have done differently, um, you can't orchestrate a movie and make it go viral. But if you're fortunate enough to have some people that are out there talking about your movie, the things I would do today is I would go out there and become part of the conversation and really get to know people that are talking about it. Like on a forum, on a blog, on, on all these different places where if there's mention in the movie, I, th I think I would be there saying hi, you know, even if it's Jimmy and Sue's blog you've never heard of, I, I'd still want to give that some credence. Um, and I understand if, if you go really, really viral, that, that may not be quite as easy because you're on a gazillion websites. Um, but the biggest lesson I learned in all of that was email capture, capturing email and building a relationship with your audience, not just for the movie you're working on today, but all movies going forward. And the reason I say email, and I'm not mentioning some of the social media out there, although there's some importance to it, is because once you have the email address, it's something that you control. I, you know, you mentioned early on that I, that I did a lot of marketing on MySpace, and that's true. And I still, every once in a while, go back to my profile and look at it. And it's, and it's just, it's almost like a part of me that's stuck forever in time. You know what I mean? There's nothing happening on my profile, um, except I, I think they redid the site recently. It looks really good. It looks but great, yeah. I, I haven't been, you know, I haven't really engaged anybody on there. Um, but anyway, social media aside, we know that sometimes it goes out of vogue. Email addresses, you know, even though some things are changing about email inboxes and engagement, it's still, to this day, one of the easiest and most personal ways that you can build a relationship with somebody because it's going directly into their inbox. And even if they ignore you, um, they probably won't ignore all of your emails and they're at least seeing that, that you're trying to engage with them as opposed to like posting a tweet or an update on Facebook where only a small percentage of people are actually going to see what it is you posted. Um, so what do you say to those people who kind of live on Twitter? And, and Twitter is a great place to meet people from all over the world and have fun conversations and, and, and Google Plus and all that, but, but you really at the core of it, you feel that email capture is the best way. Yeah, I, I feel that email capture is mm -hmm. the best way. I know there's people out there that would say, that, you know, they, they, they'd say, I gave up my website. Um, I don't even have a URL, I, don't, I just have a Twitter account or I just have a Facebook account. Um, and I think that's great. I, I just, from my perspective, um, I just think there's a, more of an intimacy to email. And I think, you know, if you look at the stats for engagement, um, you send it to somebody's inbox, you know, there's a very high percentage, a very high percentage of the time that's going to end up in their inbox. If you send a tweet out hoping that somebody sees it, it's a, it's a much lower percentage that says that they've actually seen your messaging. Um, I think Twitter and Facebook and all the different social media, both before and now and in the future, are all going to be vitally important. But I think there should be a centralized hub where you can say, okay, this is my, my place for communication, my hub, you know, my, my central location. And then, then you can kind of tweet out and email and communicate from there but you have, a, you have access to all the people that at least at some point expressed interest in your work. Um, Do you believe in that sort of, I, and I'm at a loss for words, but the email where you can't access the site, I, I'm sorry, the website where you cannot access the site until you get their email address or where you give them sort of a choice, like great, you can come to my site, but if you want to go a step beyond and I'll give you something for free that's valuable, yeah. What, what's your, do you think force people to give them your email address or give them a choice and they feel more at ease in giving you that? Yeah, so, so you know, the question is like, how, how do you get people to opt in or how do you um, share your content with people? And I think, and the focus is, do you, do you make them opt in by giving you their email address or do you just let them see your stuff and hope that they come back later and build that relationship with you? Um, I'm of the opinion that, that and, and here's my perspective on it. 
when you give away really, really good content and people get to know you, it reminds me a lot of what that experience was on our first movie where we had 100,000 people coming to our website, but they never returned. And they may have wanted to return, but they got distracted with their life, their bills, their family, all the other kinds of things you know, that we all get distracted with as humans. Um, so I think that um, giving away something to get an email address is in principle a really good opportunity for you to not only share value by giving something away that's so awesome and so valuable, but at the same time the value is you can always reach out to that person later and say, hey, I got this new thing. If you like that thing, you're going to love this thing. And I think, you know, I think a lot of businesses live and die by that philosophy. Um, not the least of which is, is what we're doing at Chill to help, uh, at the company I'm working at, Chill to help filmmakers, this thing called Insider Access, where we've created an exclusive environment for people that really love a movie. They can go in and they just opt in and now the filmmaker has their contact information and the, and the fan of the movie gets all this exclusive content that they can't get anywhere else. Where it becomes lopsided and a little bit derogatory in, in these examples is when you got somebody that just grabs an email address and doesn't prove to be valuable at all. All they do is just give away stuff that's like, hey, come buy my thing or come buy this thing or come buy that thing. And that's not at all what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is like permission-based marketing. They come to you, they're interested, so they'll flirt with you by giving you an email address. You better give them stuff that's beyond belief because if you do that, then you build that relationship with people and they come back for more. Uh, if you don't do that very quickly, you'll get a lot of unsubscribes and suddenly, your name, you're, suddenly you're that guy and you don't want to be that guy.